Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy and in today's video we're going to be doing our final mock draft of the offseason. We are getting so so close to the kickoff on Thursday Night Football on September 8th. So going forward we're going to be focusing in on week number one of the fantasy football season. Inside today's video we'll be doing a 12 team PPR mock draft from the 7th overall spot and I'll be going in depth into my thought process as I make every single pick inside of this draft as well as this discussing some of the picks going on around me. There's going to be some picks that I end up really liking as well as some picks that I end up not liking so much. And I think I should talk about both of them. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video to please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do hit that subscribe button down below. It would help us out a ton. And if you would like to follow me on Twitter, please do so at Notorious. FNTSY. So without further ado, let's get into this 12 team PPR mock draft from the seventh overall spot. The roster settings for today's draft are one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end flex, kicker defense, and six bench spots. So let's go ahead and start this draft up. The 101 here in this draft is Christian McCaffrey, followed by Jonathan Taylor, Derek Henry, Cooper Cup, Austin Eckler, as well as Justin Jefferson. So Christian McCaffrey going at the number one overall. Some people will dispute that because some people are nervous about Christian McCaffrey because Christian McCaffrey has burnt them over the last two seasons. I understand why some people might have a grudge, but at the end of the day, you have to let that grudge go. You have to understand that if Christian McCaffrey is healthy, he could easily be the number one running back in all of fantasy football by a very wide margin. Again, I'm not saying that you need to force yourself to draft Christian McCaffrey at the 101, but it, to me, at the number one overall pick, it's between Jonathan Taylor and Christian McCaffrey. We see them go number one and number two overall in this draft. Pretty normal start to the draft for running backs and two wide receivers in the first six picks, leaving us with a lot of solid players, which makes sense because we're only at pick seven in the draft. Of course, the world is our oyster at this point. There are a lot of players that I like. Best players available, according to Sleeper, are Najee Harris, Dalvin Cook, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, Devante, Adam Stefan Diggs, Travis Kelsey, DeAndre Swift, Nine Inch Nicholas Chubb, Alvin Kamara. Here I am going to go with Najee Harris. Now, a lot of people are iffy on Najee Harris because a lot of Najee Harris's targets came in one game last season and people are worrying that because Big Ben is gone that Najee Harris isn't going to be seeing as many dump offs well my argument to this is that every fucking year Mike Tomlin has been a head coach for as long as I can remember there has been a clear workhorse running back on his team that catches passes I believe that Najee Harris is going to have a lot of usage game in and game out for this team even if the team doesn't end up being as good as it has been in prior seasons I think Najee Harris still gets it done and honestly is Mitch Trubisky or Kenny Pickett a step down from Big Ben? No, they're probably steps up because Big Ben, that final year last year, legitimately looked like fucking Helen Keller in the pocket. So I'm excited to get Najee Harris too, or Najee Harris here, I should say. And if you didn't want to go Najee Harris, I think Dalvin Cook would have been an acceptable running back to select at that spot. After Harris goes Dalvin Cook, followed by Joe Mixon, Jamar Chase, Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, DeAndre Swift, Travis Kelsey, C.D. Lamb, A.A. Ron Jones, and Nine Inch, Nicholas Chubb. Typically towards the end of the first round, this edge here in a 12 team league pick 10, 11, and 12 is where people start to open up to potentially doing the double wide receiver start to the draft. Now I'm not saying that they're going zero RB because the draft just started right in the third round. They could go ahead and take a running back, but a start to the draft here, they go with zero running backs, Jamar Chase and CeeDee Lamb. That is definitely a solid start as well as here. We see zero running backs with Stefan Diggs and Travis Kelsey. I'm a big fan of Travis Kelsey this year for obvious reasons, right? He's just really fucking good, but in a 12 team league, I don't view the tight end position in as much of an importance as I would in an eight or 10 team league because eight and 10 team leagues, everyone's team is stacked in a 12 team league. There are going to be some teams that aren't very good. So I don't think having that upper echelon tight end is as important. Does that mean I wouldn't draft Travis Kelsey at the 2.2? No, but I just don't view him as important or as crucial to my draft process in a 12-team league. Again, though, at the 2.2, he's definitely an acceptable pick. Looking here at wide receiver Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel, Mike Evans, Keenan Allen, A.J. Brown, T. He Higgins. Looking at running backs, Alvin Kamara, Saquon Barkley, Javante Williams, Leonard Fournette. Now, it came out today by a Denver Broncos beat reporter. I don't know if it's going to show up. It doesn't, of course, that this split might be 55-45 in favor of Javante Williams. If that is the case... 
where Melvin Gordon is playing 45% of the time. If you get Melvin Gordon in the ninth round, you are laughing directly to the fucking bank. Now, am I saying that something a beat writer says is the lock of the century to happen? Of course not, but it is something important to note in my opinion. Here, the choice is between Kamara and Saquon Barkley. Here, we will lean with Alvin Kamara. Obviously, there is still the scenario that plays out where Alvin Kamara, the video comes out of what happens in the club, and he gets suspended. In my opinion, is that likely to happen? No. We're knocking on the door of the season starting. So I don't think that's going to happen, but there is still a percentage of a chance that that does end up happening. But I feel comfortable drafting Kamara at the 2.6. I think Kamara, had there not have been worries about him potentially getting suspended around a month ago, then... Kamara would probably be a first-round pick. After Kamara, we see Tyreek Hill, Debo Samuel, Javante Williams, Leonard Fournette, Saquon Barkley, Josh Allen, Maki Mock Andrews, Mike Evans, Tee Higgins, Kyle Pitts, A.J. Brown, and James Conner. Looking at the running backs here, if we're trying to go robust, three running backs in a row here, Zeke, Cam Akers, Travis Etienne, David Montgomery. Now, I have been someone that... Basically, after the first two rounds, if I draft two running backs, I stay away from the running back position because I think you can go with the double hero RB strategy. I Meaning these are my two hero RBs. They're my running back one, my running back two. And after that, I'm just going to hammer in on wide receiver, maybe draft an early quarterback, an early tight end. And then about a bit later in the draft, maybe around the eighth, ninth round, then I draft another running back. And I feel very comfortable with my running back room because I think Najee Harris and Alvin Kamara can carry that room heavily. But in this case, we will do something different because I do that in a lot of drafts. And we will go with Ezekiel Elliott here. Ezekiel Elliott is either going to be this season. I think there's one of two scenarios. He is either going to be fool's gold in the third round. You draft him and you're thinking, oh, last year he was banged up. That's why he didn't play too good. Now he's healthy. Now he's good to go. Now he's the fucking guy. And it ends up that they give more work to Tony Pollard. It ends up that Zeke is slowing down and Zeke doesn't look very good. But there's also a scenario where the fact that he was banged up last year genuinely impacted him. Game number one up against the Bucks, he takes those motherfuckers to pound town, take them to the cleaners, and he ends up being really good. There's two scenarios. I don't really see a middling in this scenario where Zeke is just okay. So I'm going to go for the upside here and go with Zeke. Normally, I would just go with the wide receiver in this spot. But again, when you're mock drafting, you should be trying different things every single time. So I don't want to just go ahead and utilize the same old strategy. After Zeke, we see George Kittle followed by Travis Etienne, Keenan Allen, Patty Mahomes, Cam Akers, Justin Herbert, the pervert, Michael Pittman, Deontay Johnson, Terry McLaurin, and David Montgomery. Now, at this point in the draft, if you've already gone three running backs, if you take Brees Hall, Josh Jacobs, any of these guys here, you are an insane person. Please do not do that. So here, we're either going quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end. Since we are in the fourth round, I don't think quarterbacks are very valuable here. I think I'd rather wait until the fifth round, and there's a chance that by the time we get to pick again, that a guy like Kyler Murray falls to us in the fifth round, who I like a bunch. I don't feel like necessarily reaching on Lamar in the fourth round. I think Lamar is going to be great this year. He could be the number one quarterback in fantasy, but I would rather start building this wide receiver core, which is lacking because we went three wide receivers, or three running backs in a row, I should say, off the rip with Najee Harris. Alvin Kamara and Ezekiel Elliott. So here at wide receiver, Jalen Waddle, DJ Moore, DK Metcalf, Cortland Sutton. There was some worries with Jalen Waddle earlier on the last couple of weeks where Waddle wasn't practicing. He had his leg wrapped up, but now his leg does not have the wrap in practice. He should be good to go for week number one. I'm fully confident in that. Even with that said, though, we're going to go with DJ Moore here. I really do believe that the new quarterback, Baker Mayfield, is going to help out a ton. DJ Moore has put up crazy numbers besides the touchdown total with these god-awful fucking quarterbacks. So now with Baker Mayfield, who isn't the greatest quarterback ever, I do, though, believe that he will be able to elevate DJ Moore and potentially elevate his touchdown total to a point where DJ Moore could finish inside the top eight at the wide receiver position. After DJ Moore, we see Darren Waller followed by DK Metcalf, Jerry Judy, Josh Jacobs, Brees Hall, Cortland Sutton, Elijah Mitchell opens the fifth round followed by Jalen Waddle. Waddled away, waddle, waddle, till the very next day, bum, 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 bum. Antonio Gibson, Lamar Jackson, Joe Shiesty, and Hollywood Brown. So we've seen one, two, three, four, five quarterbacks go in the first five rounds. If I felt the need here, I would draft Murray. I like Kyler Murray a ton. I know there's that narrative that Kyler Murray sucks ass once Call of Duty comes out. And there is some truth to that narrative because the numbers tell you that actually once COD comes out, this man's playing too many hours of COD because he struggles. And on double XP weekend, he struggles as well. Very interesting stats. But Kyler Murray is still a great player. 
Still one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Excellent for fantasy football because of his rushing upside. But again, we went with three running backs off the rip. So I feel like we are kind of screwed ourselves early on in the wide receiver position, which we can make up for right now. But by doing that, we can't draft a quarterback, but that's a-okay with me. The tight ends here. We're at Dalton Schultz. I'm waiting until like the sixth round earliest to draft Schultz. I'm definitely not taking him in the fifth round. So we're going to go wide receiver here. Mike Williams, Allen Robinson, Amari Cooper, Brandon Cooks, Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin. I think Amari Cooper is pretty interesting this year because he really is the only notable target in Cleveland aside from David Njoku. The question is, is Jacoby Brissett good enough early on to get the ball to Amari Cooper to where he is valuable for fantasy football? And to me, I think early on he is going to struggle. So I'd rather just go with another upside pick here. Al Robinson, significantly safer, has a decent amount of upside but we're going to swing for the fences here with Mr. Magic Mike Williams, wide receiver of the LA Chargers. Mike Williams' upside is crazy. He has the upside to legitimately carry your fucking team on his back like he's Luke and you're fucking Yoda, okay? That's how good he is. He could score 35 points, win you your week himself, but he can also take a dump directly on your chest and light your team on fire at the exact same time when he has a bad game. But I'm hunting for upside in fantasy. I don't think you win your fantasy football league by drafting this super safe lineup, this lineup that metaphorically has two condoms wrapped around it, okay? Just draft Mike Williams. I understand he's risky week in and week out, but the upside is ridiculous. And this offense is going to be fantastic this year with Justin Herbert, the pervert at the helm. After Mike Williams, we see Kyler Murray, Dalton Schultz, Allen Robinson, J.K. Dobbins, Chris Godwin. The six opens with Michael Thomas, A.J. Dillon, T.J. Hawkinson, Brandon Cooks, and Rashad Master Bateman. So all the quarterbacks that I kind of wanted here are gone. Jalen Hurts is available. He is available and he's a fine selection here. But again, we went triple running back off the rip. So I want to feel more comfortable with my wide receivers. So we're going to go with another wide receiver here. And we're going to go with Amon Ra, St. Brown, wide receiver of the Detroit Lions. His ADP has been just stuck in like the sixth or seventh round. It hasn't really moved all offseason. Once people saw what Amon Ra St. Brown could do at the end of last season, they elevated him up the board. He was undrafted in a majority of leagues in 2021. Now he's locked and loaded into the sixth round. I understand some people will talk about, oh, Nick, Amon Ross St. Brown only did it when DeAndre Swift were gone, only did it when Hawkinson was gone. Well, guess what? I think this Detroit Lions offense is going to be better this year. I think Jared Goff is a perfectly acceptable quarterback, and I think Amon Ross St. Brown is the clear number one target in this offense. This is a team that defensively isn't very good. They're going to be down in games, and guess what you have to do when you're down in the game? You're going to have to be throwing the fucking rock to your best wide receiver, who's Amon Ross St. Brown. I think he's a no-brainer pick inside of the sixth round, and he continues our trend of blue jerseyed wide receivers. After Amon Ra, we see Clyde Edwards, he lair, followed by Amari Cooper, Darnell, here comes the Mooney at the 6.9. Very nice, I like. The 6.10 is Juju Smith-Schuster, Jalen Hurts, Adam Thielen, the seventh opens with Miles Sanders, DeAndre Hopkins, Dallas Goddard, Kareem Hunt, Tony Pollard, and Russell Wilson. So we still don't have a quarterback, but while I did like Hurts, we're kind of in the range where now I like all these guys, but do I want to reach on them in the seventh round? No. Like if Tom Brady's there in the eighth round, hallelujah, I'll take Tom Brady. But am I going to force it? No. So looking at the board here again, we had those three running backs off the start. So taking any of these running backs in this range, we're kind of just telling on ourselves that we don't really believe on these three guys because these guys should be in your lineup all the time. So I'm fine waiting at least another round to draft a running back. Again, tight end here. I like Zach Ertz, but the fact that he's banged up and is in jeopardy to miss week number one, I'm kind of staying away from him at this point because I don't want to draft two tight ends. I just want one on my team. And if I draft Ertz, that means very likely if he mi if he could miss. So then I have to draft two tight ends and I'm fucking myself in that scenario. So we're going to go for some upside here. I like Gabe Davis a ton. This time we'll go with a rookie in Drake London, wide receiver of the Atlanta Falcons. I know they have Kyle Pitts and Kyle Pitts is a huge target in this offense for the Atlanta Falcons. Kyle Pitts is basically a fucking wide receiver. But at the end of the day, besides Kyle Pitts, try to name another wide receiver on the Atlanta Falcons. Maybe you can pop some names into your head. But all of those wide receivers you were thinking of more than likely suck ass at playing wide receiver in the NFL. This is going to be a heavy funnel system in this offense to Drake London and to Kyle Pitts. I understand that on this shitty offense, it may scare you away. But at the end of the day, this is another case where the team's going to be pretty bad. They're going to have to throw the ball late in games. And Drake London can catch the ball. And obviously his receiver and... Marcus Mariota isn't as bad as people say, so I like Drake London a ton in the seventh round. I would also have been 
Very excited to draft Gabe Davis. After Drake London, we see Gabe Davis followed by Tampa Bay, Tom Brady, Cordell Patterson, Damian Harris, Dawson Knox one time, if you are with me, Hunter Renfro, Devontae Smith, Kenneth Walker, Elijah Moore, and the Bills defense. Drafting a defense before the last two picks should get you executed. Honestly, that's just a fucking terrible pick. If you guys want a breakdown of my must-draft defenses, make sure you check out after this video. Don't just click off now. After this video, watch my video on the must-draft defenses from a couple days ago. It will talk about my strategy when it comes to drafting defenses, which I will break down in, say, round 14 when I go ahead and take a defense. Looking at quarterbacks here, I'm just fine waiting yet another round. I think Trey Lance will fall to me. Only Team 3 has yet to select a quarterback, so I'm pretty convicted here into the fact that I believe Trey Lance will come back to me in the ninth round. So here we are going to go with a wide receiver yet again, and we're going to go with Brandon Ayuk, wide receiver of the San Francisco 49ers. Now I know Debo Samuel is the sexy name in San Francisco. Last year, Debo Samuel was running the ball. He's catching the ball. The guy was a Swiss army knife. He was fucking amazing for the 49ers. He was fantastic. He's catching every ball thrown his way by Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy Guap, Jimmy G spot. And last year, Brandon Ayuk was basically doing the opposite because Brandon Ayuk was locked in the fucking doghouse by Kyle Shanahan. But at the end of the day, once the kind of locks came off of Brandon Ayuk, once he got unhandcuffed by Kyle Shanahan, then Brandon Ayuk started balling as well. I understand this is a run-heavy offense. I understand there are some worries about Trey Lance, but all the footage I've seen out of training camp are all these crazy-ass catches from Trey Lance heaving the ball to Brandon Ayuk. So I'm pretty comfortable with Ayuk, and he is our wide receiver number five. So it's not like I'm relying on him week in and week out. After Ayuk, we see Rashad Penny, Zach Ertz, Devin Singletary, Dickie Dak, Prescott, Traylon Burks, Alan Lazard, Tyler Lockett in my pocket, Chase Edmonds, the Rams defense, Matthew Stafford, Damian Pierce, and Chris Olave. Now, Pierce is a guy that I have been keyed in on all offseason. Pierce goes in the ninth round here. Don't be surprised in your draft if he goes in like the sixth round. Also, don't be surprised if he goes in the 12th round. It really just depends on how knowledgeable your league mates are on the NFL and fantasy football as a whole. Because you're playing with some new players or some players that don't give as much of a fuck about fantasy football as you do, right? You're watching a fantasy football video then, and you're watching one 20 minutes about deep into the video, so you clearly care. They might not know who Damian Pierce is, so you might be able to wait. But in other leagues, people are like, holy shit, Damian Pierce this, Damian Pierce that. They're down on their knees for him, and they draft him like the fifth round. So his ADP is going to be wildly different uh, based upon how sharp your league mates are. So here, I think we are in about the time of the draft where we could go running back, and I'd like to go running back, but we still don't have a quarterback, so we're going to go with Trey Lance here, stack him up with Brandon Ayuk. Now, I know that Trey Lance is someone that is very hit or miss for some fantasy football players because they're nervous about the fact that maybe this guy just can't throw the ball and maybe he will get benched for Jimmy Garoppolo. They think, oh, there's a reason why Jimmy Garoppolo got brought back and that's because the team doesn't believe in Trey Lance. In my opinion, I've talked about this in a couple of videos, so I'll try to keep it short, like Kyler Murray. (laughs) So the reason why I think they kept Jimmy Garoppolo is because they don't want Jimmy Garoppolo to walk on over to some other team and potentially stab the 49ers in the back by playing just about all right like Jimmy G always does and elevating some team that has the potential but not the quarterback, i.e., in example, their division mates, the Seattle Seahawks. If Jimmy Guap goes there, he helps the Seahawks a ton compared to Geno Smith and Horsecock Drew Locke. So I think that's why they kept Jimmy. I'm very comfortable with Lance and his rushing upside makes him basically a must draft player in the ninth round if he falls to you. After Lance comes Pat Fryer Muth, Aaron, uh, A. Ron Rogers, almost said Aaron Rogers, A. A. Ron Rogers, Derek Ka, Mike Lickia Magasiki, uh, James Cook, Melvin Gordon, who we talked about a little bit earlier, Christian Kirk, who I like a decent amount, Robert Woods, Cole Komet, and Ramondre Stevenson, but you can see the draft is paused. That's because I want to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor of today's video. They've been on the screen the whole time. They're all the way up there. If I had, you remember in Space Jam when Jordan fucking has those like elastic arms and absolutely yams the ball down from half court. If I had those, I'd be pointing directly at it, but I can't. So I just got to point like this. With that said, Underdog Fantasy, the sponsor of today's video, They will double your first match deposit bonus of up to $100 when you use promo code STOCHASTIC. So if you deposit $100, they will give you an additional $100. And in my opinion, Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play best ball this summer. If you're preparing for your draft, the best way, honestly, to do it is in a best ball draft for real fucking money. 
for real money because people will actually care. If you hop on in a random draft room on another website, someone might take a kicker in the third round because they don't care. Whereas on underdog, they actually care. And that team that you draft because you put money up on it, you could win $2 million first place in the Best Ball Mania 3 tournament. And the best thing about Best Ball is you don't have to worry about setting your lineup. You don't have to worry about doing waivers. You don't have to worry about dealing with trades because you can't trade, you can't do waivers, and Underdog will automatically give you the best scores in your lineup, put into your lineup every single week. So it makes fantasy football super easy. You can track it all year long, or you can draft it now, forget about it, and potentially come back in January with some fat stacks in your account. So make sure you guys do check out Underdog Fantasy Promo code stochastic for that $100 first match deposit bonus. So we're back on in to things here from the 10.6 here, our 10th round selection right now. We got one quarterback. We have two running backs in our starting lineup. We have our flexes running back, and we have no other ones. We got three running backs. We have one, two, three, four, five wide receivers that we all drafted in a row. So eventually, we're going to have to hop back in on the running back train, and we will do that right now we're gonna go with James Robinson here I don't think James Robinson is very much of a safe pick but I do know that maybe there's a chance that Travis Etienne isn't the guy that people are drafting him for that maybe James Robinson could be the number one back on this team and maybe the fact that James Robinson is really good at pass catching negatively affects Etienne and James Robinson as a 10th round pick is the number one back on this team I think it's possible we've seen James Robinson play so well in the past. Now, it's not like he got injured in week one. He's coming off the injury from, I believe, week 15 or 16. So I don't think he's going to start the season looking like the James Robinson we know in the past, but I think there could be a point in the season where James Robinson overtakes ETN as the number one running back on the team, and getting that in the 10th round, a potential number one running back on his team is very valuable. After Robinson, we see Garrett Wilson, George Pickens, uh, the Bucks defense, Michael Cotta, the Ravens defense, Kadarius Tony, Chase Claypool, Sky with two Ys more, Julio Jones, Alexander Madison, Kirk Cousins, as well as Tyler. Yeah, Boyd. So we probably need another running back, but since I'm comfortable with Zeke and all these guys, we're not taking another running back until the 13th round. We definitely need a tight end. And we are in the range of tight end where it's like, while I don't want to take two tight ends, I might have to because I've waited so long. Here, we're going to take our first shot on Tyler Higby. We'll see how things go. I'm pretty comfortable with Tyler Higby as my number one tight end because Tyler Higby was really good last year. Now, he didn't score a lot of points, but he was in a lot of scenarios to score points. He's on the field all the fucking time. And this could be a team that scores a crazy amount of points just like last year. And what happens if Cooper Cup regresses in touchdowns? He doesn't score an insane amount of touchdowns like he did in year last year, 2021. And then what did those touchdowns go to Higby? Then we're looking at Higby as a potential top six tight end that you found in the 11th round. Now, am I claiming Higby is a top six tight end? Fuck no. But I do believe that that is entirely possible. So I like Higby a ton in the 11th round. He's one of those tight ends that I'm smash drafting in best ball like an underdog. I love Tyler Higby late. After Higby, we see Naheem Hines followed by the 49ers defense, Harrison Bucker the fucker, Chargers defense, Justin Tucker the fucker, uh, Hunter Henry, Daniel Carlson, Cowboys D, Evan McPherson, the money badger, and then we got Darrell Henderson. So I want to go back into the wide receiver well here. I'm fine not drafting another tight end. If Higby doesn't do it for us the first two weeks, then I'll just cut him and pick up some other solid tight end because there's bound to be some random tight end off the waiver wire that is just going balls deep in defenses uh, two weeks into the season. It's always like that. So now we're back up on the board here. Going to be looking for yet another high upside wide receiver pick, and then we will go with running back unless I feel like the running backs fall off after this. And if I'm being honest with you, that's kind of what I'm feeling right now. I like Kenny Gainwell a ton. I think Gainwell is the clear number two running back behind Miles Sanders. And I don't think Miles Sanders necessarily profiles as some workhorse running back in the NFL. So I think we're going to see a ton of Gainwell, especially since he's so good at pass catching. And Sanders has kind of regressed in his pass catching abilities over the last couple of years. So I like Gainwell a ton here in the 12th round. And we'll close out the draft with a wide receiver than our defense and kicker. So after Gainwell, we're just going to stop talking about kickers and defenses. So I'll just name every other player besides the kickers and defenses. So we got MVS, Albert O, Isaiah Spiller, Tua Tungavailoa, Jarvis Landry, Rondell Moore, and 
Rashad White. So we're back up here, gonna go with a wide receiver. And again, we're just hunting for upside. We're gonna go with Romeo Dubes, wide receiver of the Green Bay Packers. We have taken Dubes a decent amount at the end of these drafts. Again, the Packers head coach Matt LaFleur is talking about the fact that they want to spread the ball out a little bit more. They don't want to necessarily have this funnel system. There's not gonna be a true wide receiver one in Green Bay like there was with Devontae Adams. It is what it is. Romeo Dubes doesn't have to be this crazy target monster to be valuable in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. If you didn't want Dubes, could have went with Jahan Dotson, could have went with Devontae Paca, Jacoby Myers, DJ Chark, uh, Jalen Tolbert, Sammy Watkins, Nico Collins, Alec Pierce, KJ Osborne. There's a lot of wide receivers I like late in drafts. After we went with Dubes came Michael Gallup, Russell Gage, Brian Robinson, Devontae Paca, Justin Fields, Jahan Dotson, Khalil Herbert, uh, David Njoku, Tyler Algier and my old bitch lame, but my young Hoku here. We're going to go with defense. We're going to go with the abridged version. I think that's kind of the shorter version of my defense breakdown. You want to draft a defense that plays a easy offense week one. Then week two, if they have a harder matchup, you just cut them. It's really that easy. You don't have to draft a defense that you think, oh, I love the, the Bills this year, right? They've got Von Miller. They've got this. They got that. Holy shit, I love the Bills. And then what happens when the Bills place the Rams week one and get face fucked by the Rams offense? They're going to be bad. So not even these great defenses aren't great every single week. So it's much easier to find a defense off the waiver wire that has a good matchup that you can start every week. Denver, week one, gets Seattle. That should be a very easy game for the Broncos defense and offense. Definitely. I mean, Russell Wilson is going to absolutely eat those guys alive. After the Broncos comes Maki Mock Ingram, Christian Watson, Jamal Williams, Irv Smith, Robert Tunyon, DJ Chark, do 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 baby Chark, Jacoby Myers, Ronald Jones somehow makes the Kansas City team, uh, the 53-man roster, and now we're up here to go with a kicker. We're just going to go best kicker available here and go with Sir William Lutz. After Lutz, we see Trevor Lawrence followed by J.D. McKisson Titties, uh, famous Jameis Winston, Mystic Mac Jones, and the Steelers defense is Mr. Irrelevant, but there's so many of them because, you know, they're all on the same defense. It's the Misters irrelevant there that joke fucking fell flat on its face so our team here to recap from the 107 we went with Najee Harris Alvin Kamara Ezekiel Elliott then after that we were like you know what we've taken three running backs in a row I honestly thought if you took another in the fourth round you are just crazy you're just crazy so we go DJ Moore Mike Williams Amon Ra St. Brown Drake London Brandon Ayuk and then the ninth round I'm thinking oh Need a quarterback, don't have one yet. Bam, Trey Lance, love Trey Lance. Then I go James Robinson. Then I go with Tyler Higby because we didn't have a tight end. Then Kenny Gainwell, Romeo Dubes, the Broncos defense, and Will Lutz. So let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about today's draft. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Either way, let me know, know down below in the comment section. And make sure you guys check out Underdog Fantasy, promo code STOCHASTIC to get that $100 first match deposit bonus as well as getting our draft guide for 100% free. So I love you guys all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy.